colleagues with me, Rolf, he's running our Swiss manufacturer, the watch hey. manufacturer in Switzerland. And Kurt, as you see, one of our master watchmakers, master engineers, he will also give you some, some insight into the, the stuff that we're doing. So what we are doing is there has been a certain transfer from the dash uh, to the wrist. And this didn't happen by chance. There's a little story, a little heritage behind, and would like to give you some insight. If there are any questions, please jump in and ask. To all that what we want to Porsche Design as a brand and to watch this goes back to the year 1972 and it goes back to this man. It is uh, Ferdinand Alexander Porsche. He is one of four sons of the sports car company founder Perry Porsche. Uh, he was designer and he joined his father's company in 56, uh, uh, 57 becoming head of design and he had the, the honor but also the pressure to create the success of the 356. Today we knew that he was the man to create the 911 which set the backbone for the Porsche today and made him become an icon as a designer as well. In 1972, that was a very important year because in 1972, due to several reasons, family decided to take the company public and to bring in external management. So all four sons of Ferry and the cousin, Ferdinand Pierre, they were engaged in a car company. And so by deciding that the car, the company goes public and the external management was brought in, a young gentleman, all in the late 20s, mid 30s, suddenly they were jobless. So no need to really, oh, but uh, as it was Mr. Porsche called Porsche and he was a designer, he started his own business called Porsche Design. That goes back to 1972. Today we're really happy that it was him and not Mr. Müller, otherwise we would talk about Müller Design today. The whole thing started with the first order or the first project that was given to the newly founded studio. It was to create the wristwatch for the employees that were with the company for 25 years. And as the Porsche family has always been very deep and closely related to mechanical wristwatches, they did not want to go for something that was existing and put an engraving on. They asked FA to create the watch. So, FA, please try to go back to the 50s and 60s. There was only one model line, the 356 and then a 911. So as a designer, he was mainly doing race cars. And in the 50s and early 60s, long distance racing became popular. And long distance, especially 24 hours, means 12 hours driving at night. Make yourself an idea in the early 60s the front lights they were more they were better candles then a weather condition like today some little rain and 12 hours at night the cars were doing more than 200 miles per hour already in these days so imagine at night the guys could see nothing mainly due to the fact that the dash it was metal and it created a lot of, of distraction glare so the best thing before putting more more power to the engine was to reduce glare and distraction. So FA started to put the black carpet on the metal and things like that. And slowly but steadily, in 1969, the dash within the 911 turned into black and white. Just because of the fact that matte black and matte white is the maximum contrast, has, a, has less glare and this is how the dash looks like and still 911 or Porsche dash look like this. So when he was asked to do a watch, he detected what he did. He transferred what he detected, what he developed over years and made a watch truck. In 1972, I was four years old, I cannot prove that. But it was thought that it was a complete revolution because watches per definition were jewelry. They were glimmering, they were shimmering, and with the Porsche brought a black watch. Some British media stated that you can only wear it for funerals. So it was really uh, quite a strange situation. So this is how everything started back in 72. Now we know that not all of the employees that were given one of these watches kept it because suddenly some of the watches were spotted on, on race drivers' wristwatches, uh, on, on race drivers' wrists. 
And due to its black surface, they could be easily spotted. So here we see Mario Andretti wearing the watch in this 1978 Formula One World Championship season. You have many others of these of this era wearing it. And by doing so, the watch became popular. So Porsche owners approached their dealerships and said, there is a watch saying Porsche on it, how to get that? And this is how the whole thing started to be commercial. So there was no commercial stuff behind that. For the, for the video. Two other gentlemen from this era, you probably know, might know Gianni Agnelli. Agnelli family still today owns Fiat and Ferrari. In these days, that's the old Agnelli. That's a picture from the early 80s. So Gianni Agnelli in these days, he was head of Formula One Ferrari team. And he was only Fiat. In the early 80s, Hoyer was the sponsor of Formula One. Longines was the timing partner of Ferrari. And he was wearing the Porsche sign chrono because it was by far the coolest stuff in these days. He always wore it outside. That was the Italian style. So this is how the watch became quite popular. Due to its properties, so perfect readability and no glare distractions, the watch suddenly got a second, a second career as a military watch. A military means that many air forces, mainly air force organizations, took the watch and gave their, their staff, their pilots, the watch because it was, had, was perfect to read, it was very functional. So we had the German Bundeswehr, the NATO, the Royal Navy, put that on the wrist, and we had all the US Air Force and Tigers, they were equipped with that one. This gave another, uh, uh, or created another uh, something. In the 1968 Top Gun movie, Tom Cruise was wearing the one. Not by the fact there was a, a, a funny marketing guy or somebody for product placement. Cruz wanted to be as authentic as possible in everything he wore. So as the Tigers wore the chronograph, the Porsche time chronograph, he wanted to go for that as well because that was the watch of the Tigers. He didn't want to go for anything else and this is how the watch then entered and started becoming popular on Cruz's wrist. Um, by the way, in 86, Jerry Bruckheimer doing the, the production, and Cruz, they did not buy it. They asked us, our Beverly Hills store downtown LA, uh, to rent the watch. So we took it back after the, after the movie. In a 22 release, he wore the watch again. It by, by incident, it was exactly the same watch. We kept it over the years. So we lent it into him for more Top Gun 2. But we took it back. Of course, he wanted to purchase it, but we didn't sell it to him. But maybe there will be a third Top Gun, and they will give it a third, lend it for the third time. So, in a nutshell, this is the history and heritage why Porsche started, or how Porsche started into watches. And Ferdinand Alexander Porsche, he was a watch guy, as you, among others, can see at this picture here. When he was asked about his purpose, he said it was all about raising a wristwatch for a sports car driver. So we, today we call it sports car the wrist, and all that started 51 years ago. Today, Porsche Design is fully owned subsidiary of Porsche AG, so we belong to the sports car manufacturer. It's not a privately held company anymore by the Porsche family. And we have four main tasks. One task is we need to work on, I won't call it compensate, but at least lower the risk of the biggest disadvantage of our sports cars that we have. You know what it is? There's one big disadvantage that every sports car has that we at Porsche produce. You cannot take it with you. The restaurant, the living room, the gym, the golf course. So you have to leave it outside, in the parking space, the parking lot, the garage, whatever. So we started to work on, we call it, extending sports car ownership experience and put the essential part of the watch of the car inside the watch. By doing so, we have the honor, but also the privilege to preserve and continue as a heritage. We are contributing to the luxury perception of Porsche, because Porsche is the only car manufacturer that does watches on its own. And of course, by doing so, we are lighthouse in a Porsche sign brand. 
So we are approaching in terms of target group, we are approaching him and the friend with the red 911, the green 911. That's the one we are doing that for. Well, we have a, a little overview about the 51 years that we're doing watches. The first 40 years, we were cooperating with external partners. With Orfina, it was a little OEM in Switzerland. Then it was IWC, and then it was Eterna doing our watches. And in 2012, we stopped that, started a Greenfield operation, setting up the manufacture in Switzerland in 2014. So as of 2014, Porsche became a fully independent watch manufacturer with the Swiss manufacturer. So that a little bit, or not a little bit, that's our story. So in terms of experience and in terms of durability of watchmaking, we are still in our baby shoes with 10 years next year. But in terms of credibility, uh, we are already quite advanced. So what are we doing? We are not behaving as a typical watch manufacturer because we are doing watches to extend ownership experience and, and to continue at this legacy. To a certain extent, closely linked to our business. The majority of our business is to create individual watches matching our customers' cars. We'll do a deep dive on that. Then there are since 2020, all model lines offer the opportunity to have a high-end mechanical, looking like a mechanical watch inside the desk. And of course, we brought back with this watch last year. So that's the, the offer that we do, and it's of course very Porsche specific. The main thing that we do is we offer fully individualized watches to our customers. It may not, not sound that uh, dramatic to you yet, but we'd like to give you some insight why we do that and how we do that. So at Porsche, probably you have seen the Sonderbusch house, we call it You Dream It, We Build It. And we exactly do that with the watches. So our customers, as you probably know, they maximize the individualization of cars in terms of colors, in terms of leather, in terms of yarn, in terms of wheels, coloring the wheels. So each 911 is personal and there's no stock. So we don't build cars in Stuttgart to put it anywhere on the lot. You order the car and then we start building it. And we exactly follow that and transfer that into wristwatches. So it's all about colors, of course. Uh, it's all about matching it the maximum watch to the car. Now we call the program custom built timepieces because we custom built watches to match your car. And how we do that? We have a little movie with us. So whatever we do at the moment is linked to the 911. So we do watches fully matching the 911. Means as a customer, you have you choose your car, you it's red or if it's yellow, and then you start choosing your personal watch. So the options themselves they are varying. It starts with the case and the bezel, titanium, titanium black coated, all all you like. Then we go with the hands. Then we have the coloration of the ring matching the interior color. All the leather. All the yarns are exactly matching what you have inside your car. And as we are an engineering company, of course, we don't do normal winding rotors. We transfer the design of your wheel and make it a winding rotor, even using the same class. So as you have seen, today there are more than 6 million options without all the band options. So we cannot behave like a normal watch manufacturer, because what watch shall be built and what watch should be put on stock. We would need warehouses that would cover all inside here like on a second. So there is only one man, woman, knowing how the future watch looks, looks like. It's you, it's the customer. So like with the sports car, so we have created a watch configurator. It's uh, net-based, web-based. 
and you enter it and you create your watch following the car configuration. You start with the housing, with the hands, with all the details, and at the end it gives you a code. You, you know the price, you hand it over to your dealership, and your dealer orders the watch magic to your car. If you have a car, you can even add the VIN, the vehicle identification number, and then it, it, it on separately links to your sports car. So actually more than 6 million options available. On top of that, as of last year, we also started offering paint to sample. I don't know how familiar you are with that, but paint to sample is one of the key offers at Porsche. So to have the car maximal individualized for the outside, Porsche is offering beside the 26 base colors, which is offering one and 14 plus 13. So in total, you may choose nearly 150 different colors, blues and whatever. This is a screenshot from the watch configurator. So then you, you do the same choice. In that case here, you join Python Green, you click on the configurator, it shows how the watch will look like, it gives you the price, and you accept or not. Like a car configurator, each click uh, is increasing your bill. So important to know, um, we only have Porsche colors because we are the sports car manufacturer and watch manufacturer. So when we talk about red, we talk about dance red and carmine red. When we talk about yellow, we talk about speed yellow. When we talk about green, we talk about OF green, and then green, super green, but no other green. So exactly what we offer within our sports car assortment is what we do with watches. And how we do that? This is the manufacturer in Switzerland. To do so, we had to build an old uh, dedicated factory. It's not possible to do it with anybody else. Just by a lot of, of reasons. But to, to do all that, like the winding road and all the things, we have access, we need to have access to the future cars. So we start working on the watches, matching our future cars three to four years in advance. And how we do that, well, I would like to ask my colleague Rolf to give you a deep dive on that. Yes, of course. Thank you, guys.